fellow Ghanaians, since the last time I came to your homes once again, <laughs> I traveled to Peki with my beautiful Becky, just to understand what it means when the science and data, according to my experts, indicate that we have peaked. Over there, and I mean Peki, I met a fantastic French teacher who taught me how to conjugate peak, and I want to share with you, hoping that the knowledge of conjugating peak in French will help us all understand what it means, right, when we say we have peaked, okay? So if you're ready, say after me, je suis piqué. Everybody ready, go, je suis piqué. That's right, tu es piqué. Uh, uh, tu es piqué, no, I, I think it's, that, that one is, um, tu es piqués, or piquis. Oh yeah, let's go, tu es piquis. Two epics. Uh huh. Good. Now, um, next one. Look, it is what? <laughs> yes, I remember. El obiel el pikist. That one. If you forget, sir, I will understand because me, sir, I don't remember. It won't come. Yeah, I mean, it, it won't come in the exams. But this one is examinable. Take note. Nous sont piquants. Everybody go. Nous sont piquants. Uh huh. Nous sont for the last time, nous sommes piquants. Nous sommes piquants. I know quand c'est au chiawan piquant. Très bien, très bien, très bien. Merci beaucoup. Um, applaudissez, applaudissez, uh, mon cas, applaudissez tout, tout toi-même or something. It means clap for yourself. We, we, we. Applaudissez, applaudissez. Now the rest of the conjugation, you know, take it as homework. <laughs> yeah. The most difficult part of every topic is always homework. But those of you who didn't say some, no, I am not surprised your French teacher beat you so hard. But fellow Ghanaians, fellow Ghanaians, the last time no, the president came to our homes once again, he said we should do things that will boost our immune system, like eat kontome, eat ngao, mekwang, kotoje, yemuadia, tumpane, awakbulan fufu, and beef. No wonder some sisters have been cooking a lot of lyrical beef these days. One thing that the president tragically, tragically left out that scientists have confirmed can boost our, your immune system, including mine, is great company where you can laugh out loud and think hard at the same time about your personal growth, how you can contribute to the growth of this one we call Ghana. We call Ghana. And also, you know, an opportunity to shape the direction of the country, which is what you get served every day on City TV. And Backpage is but just one of our many approaches to boost your immune system. And me, you know, my name is Caleb Kuda. So, Tashi, Mimba, Fionu, Mimba. Welcome to the show, my friends. I was out contemplating how the lockdown has been lifted with assurances that we have peaked. A few more deaths recorded while recoveries continue to increase. Meanwhile, regrettably, our social disorder has not recovered. A case in point, Kaneshi. Uh, this site is a source of frustration for a lot of commuters. If you are commuting to transact business, in the central business district, for example, or any part of Accra because you are coming from this side of town, you are going to be held up for some significant amount of time on this stretch. Actually, what I see is, um, you know, there's this uh, total stations over there and um, the construction of the, the new cycle there has also compounded the, pr the problem. Because they actually stopped in the way, try to get some passengers. And uh, everybody... It's bad because then you're, you're, you're slowing down traffic. We're wasting man hours. While I was still trying to trouble city authorities who want to close their eyes to a major source of frustration and inconvenience for both commuters and even the perpetrators of the chaos, and I promise I will trouble them, so wait for it. I met a visiting lecturer from Jamaica 
who explain rather succinctly what it means to peak when your COVID-19 cases are still dancing. Bese, bese, ah, bese. I want to talk about the coronavirus. What about it? The coronavirus is passed away. You have to come and enter Ghana here. Ghana between Cote d'Ivoire and Tawasi, the middle of the sea. Coronavirus. Prof, wait, don't land. Let's stay in the sea, you see. You can't confuse me and my viewers. Because the curve is still curving upwards. And you say it has entered the, the, way, the middle of the, way, the sea. I won't talk about the coronavirus. What about it? The coronavirus is passed away. You have to come and enter Ghana here. Ghana between Cote d'Ivoire and Tawasi, the middle of the sea. Coronavirus. You can 18 people in Ghana here. I think it's very surely. And uh, I'm talking about America, about 65,000 and 70 to 70,000 over. But Ghana, we are lucky. Only 18 people dead in Ghana here. So everybody, feel free. And give thanks, power thanks to Almighty God, Ireland. Power thanks to Almighty God, Ireland. Prof, thanks for uh, coming. I love the fact that Prof came with his own data and he, you know, kept nuancing the data and declared that we are free, even though his theory is worrying. Because if the virus has entered the sea, then our seamen will bring it to our land. But yeah, he says we should feel free. No wonder the Ghana Tourism Authority said, <laughs> In other words, belly bus and brick bottles. Ironically, I'm told the one who announced the billing of the bars is a pastor who rubbished calls for churches to be open if bars too should be open. So, uh, Monday, um, we are supposed to regulate tourism plans or operators in the country. Uh, I'm saying that we are working with the law and by doing so, they need to adhere strictly to the precautionary protocols just as marketplaces are opening and other uh, shopping malls are opening they are all part of the exemption so much as they are also operating we are we are we are telling them that uh, uh adhere strictly to the protocol so we are working with the gi for really it's been a beautiful comedy of errors because on a cool sunday night when senior wedding i you know other fellow Ghanaians were on a roller coaster of ecstatic elasticity curve, singing for Hukumi. <laughs> then fellow Ghanaians came to our homes once again and said that, look, the bar for bars was still too high to allow for communal boozing and other things. Tonight, I've come into your homes to announce that the ban on public gatherings has set out in executive instrument number 64 has been extended also to the end of the month, i.e. 31st May. So during this period, there will continue to be a ban on public gatherings such as the holding of conferences, workshops, parties, nightclubs, drinking spots, beaches, festivals, political rallies, religious activities and sporting events. All educational facilities, private and public, continue to remain closed. There's still a ban on funerals, other than private burials conducted with not more than 25 persons. So clearly, right, there has been confusion because uh, the, the president of the Hanolau Association, i.e. Palm Wine Drinkers Association, and the executive secretary of the Conseil Agrive on Bonded Patechimulao Association of Ghana were very excited that they can finally get to congregate and drink for the say calabash only for the tourism at a quarter minister to come and pour gari into the yakeyeke too okay we wish to clarify that further to the directive of his excellency the president regarding the extension of the ban on public gatherings the status quo remains the same which means that bars drinking bars and nightclubs remain closed they cannot operate food chains and restaurants including restaurants in hotels can operate takeout and delivery services 
So that's it. The directives are peaking, you understand. And I know our self-styled nation's prophet would have, you know, cried again that, look, it is not well, 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 it is not well with my soul. You know, because churches remain, you know, closed, but then folks are allowed to congregate, uh, you know, and booze. But yes, that has been answered. I will come to the Supreme Court Justice nominee whose appointment appears to be on ice because, well, hmm, <laughs> interesting times. I will come to that. While he was before the committee, I was around the Kaneshi Market Complex, right? Uh, that market is more than 40 years old, four decades, and it remains one of the well-structured markets in the crowd. But it appears things fall apart at the Kaneshi Market. Uh, for the past, my friend said, for the past three years, did you? Then, so to add a new. Not from first light, it's only few and ever. And I never fought for cars, no one, I don't know. A fakas, a fakas, wa. You want to mention them, only you'll be our couple da. There's no way to mention them soon. Cars need to be too cool. The Bianco, there's a funny ways. I mean, say, the rescue sarcasm. They say, you push, you push. Cars in the and a moment direction. Right. And you know, uh, uh, you, uh, besides these, you know, you could spend up to an hour being in traffic on that street just because hawkers have taken over portions of the road. So I'm looking at the, the enclave of the market, right? Some have been there selling for up to 30 years socks and other things. And commercial bus drivers too, some have been there for up to 45 years, using the road itself as a bus terminal. Hence, reducing the three-lane highway to a half lane. Half lane. Okay, you bet you're all right. But if we go on the I don't know if you bet about it. Because of uh, sickness now, but I'm moving all right. Sickness, yeah. I want to call you now here's what is um, funny about the whole Kaneshi story yeah there are two assemblies that have jurisdiction over the area Accra Metropolitan Assembly has jurisdiction over the Kanishi Market Complex site, which is the most unhygienic anyway, insanitary, a whole bon And the Ablekuma Central Municipal Assembly site, no, which has the most traffic congestion with police presence comfortably superintendent, superintending the mess. But Ghana, eh, we have mustered politics better than we have all mustard organizing our public spaces so you you find these market women playing politics president that be on the car let's come on i'm much more no multi clam no me we 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 no be a mom quite on tom with a be an answer man hey i go for the 2020 yeah but slow what's your boy what's your name and you Cleaner city for Mutier, you know, you have to sit up. <laughs> really, you have to sit up. Because if you tell us you have the man, we have greater expectations. You can have two assembly superintendents over one place taking, you know, toll and all those things, and that place is a mess. You have to show leadership. 
okay and we can't just slice you know the city into small small pieces and our urban spaces will continue to look and smell like s s something i can't say i want to let you sleep in peace over this kind of thing do something asap okay do something and when you do i'll commend you now after returning to the office, right, from this Kadesh uh, story, I came to hear that a distinguished man who has been appointed to the Supreme Court as a justice, you know, <laughs> his approval has been put on ice because he allegedly kissed the feet of the president not long ago. So, Charlie, minority members, you know, I must say his fidelity will be to the president and his party and not to the Constitution. The interactions were so interesting, we can only take a break right after the interaction. Take a look. We say, are you called to your excellency and may God and our ancestors shower their blessings on you, give you longer life and deeper thoughts to move this nation forward. It is our hope that with your vision and the gains made in your first term, Ghanaians may consider giving you another four years. If some people out of political uh, dissatisfaction of what, whatever I had read affects them, then I'm sorry, just forget about it. That's the end of it. Welcome back, my friends. So there were two other Supreme Court justice nominees. I mean, Supreme Court nominees. Yeah, justice nominees. Who got the whole country dazzled before uh, the appointments committee but before i tell you about them did you know it's been a year since city tv launched its war against indiscipline campaign with the police well i have received requests from some special quarters to do some throwbacks to the glory of god so you look at this <laughs> So your driver has offended the traffic rules and traffic sorry, regulations. Sorry, sorry. We are processing him before the law court to give us time to process him. And when we are through with the process, we will allow you to go. We are, excuse me, excuse me. We are going for EMT. Oh, he's not supposed to catch me, we're lying. But it's not only me, why did he catch only me? Because cars are passing there plenty. Oh, please. This is a national interest. I'm not for myself. So and if you like, if you like by eight o'clock, go there and ask whether I'm not there. Send me well. Send me well. Because I'm serving the national interest. And to every rule, look at the national interest. Because you people have the uniform. We bought the uniform for you. I don't know who your favorite is. Just that, I mean, one year on, I have never heard national interest even cough in parliament before. <laughs> Maybe it's because of the corona, you know. This is why, you know, hashtag why has achieved more than can be measured, even though more needs to be done. So, you know, when you say a word of prayer, remember to say one for CTTV in Penny 4 and the entire crew, as well as the police, you know, so that more people can be converted. Yeah, no, it's not. Now, enjoy these beautiful moments when DSP Azugu's cross examiner in chief showed up at the appointments committee to teach the members some law and some life lessons itself. When, for example, judges take decisions in the courts, the judge may have really sweated over the decision. It goes on appeal and it is reversed. That judge doesn't hold a press conference to complain. That's the nature of it. Would you have wished personally for better? Well, when you give advice, you hope that it will be taken. But what I know of advice is that those who want it don't need it, and those who need it don't want it. Now, for most people, the most beautiful part of Professor Henrietta, Henrietta Mensa Bonsu's vetting was when the husband stood up proudly. I'm told even before Joe Ose Usujo Wise finished mentioning his name, he was up. 
before I discharge you, let me recognize Mr. Kwekume Sabunsu. Of, uh, yes. <laughs> Nana SKB Asante. Say you like. Isn't that beautiful? But she is smarter than you, so you say, oh, you don't like again. You see, you like. See, you to give your children, especially your daughters, higher education. What's it that? Have you seen your face? MPs were just refreshing their memories of their law lessons and seeking her opinion, even for their own personal lives at the vetting committee. I mean, as for the MP you know, who came to read a written question and kept fumbling, she can even be allowed, Charlie. We can only hope that, you know, the era of good meeting loving justices who haggle the price of justice with the rich and wicked but sentence the innocent and poor to condemnation. <laughs> I mean, the era of butter trading justice with good appointing, appointing mates will end soon with the appointment of persons like these. I mean, to be honest, it's been a long time I heard anyone confidently and proudly say that I am a Pepe man. It's been a long time. And, and I like to say that I'm a Pepe man and my cultural orientation and my personal value system is that if you ever deal with me in considerations of right and wrong, you may not like me because I tend to see black as black and see white as white. There are today two categories of Pepe people and that we have Pepe of the blood and of the soil. And you also have Pepe of the blood but not of the soil. As I told you, before I crossed Bamboy Sadwas, I was 17 years. So my core values were crystallized. So I'm a pepe of the blood and of the soil. Yeah. Look, one thing that this amazing legal luminary said that touched many hearts was this one. I don't take this business lightly. I think that judgeship is, is a sacred responsibility. And, and, and also, let, let me say this, Mr. Chairman, in all humility, the man who trained me knows me. But you know, these days, the ministry, you know, <laughs> anointing why the price alone can collapse a whole multinational company. So, <laughs> you know, it's okay. But I honestly don't know why some lawyer friends of mine on Facebook have been saying, ministry, ministry, hey, you collect this. I oh, know, is it collect? Oh, uh, oh, wait. What do I say? Ministry, ministry. Hey, yo, Kule this. <laughs> Kule. Hey. Let's go. Hey. Please, me, I don't know anything about this. Just that, um, your lordship. <laughs> Your niece is not. <laughs> if there are more, you know, my distant cousin B, he sells Chaku at Tulaku. Yeah, he says he begs to you to connect him, you understand? He also wants to be on the Kujatos all day. You get what I mean. Congratulations, really. I mean, you are an inspiration, including the other one, too. Now, tell me, if clubs were opened and Matunamidu happened to be at any of the clubs, which song do you think he will jump to? Could it be, I mean, this one? Which, which one could it be? As the Supreme Court, you know, in an overwhelming majority ruling, uh, said that his age does not prevent him from being special prosecutor. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, many people are hoping this ends the, you know, lamentations too, so that some people can be in the situation of the former SEA directors lose all. Yeah, I understand. Four million dollar scandal. Tell you, not be easy. NCA blew four million dollars for the clandestine or secretive purchase of a device that was supposed to listen, you know, to people's conversations when they are suspected to be linked with terror activities. The monies 
that have entered private pockets, you know, eh? <laughs> that we claim the lockdown has started the economy, you know. Oh, yeah, oh. The lockdown is not something that we believe um, is going to work any longer. I've said that now we have realized the lockdown taught us a lot of things. And its impact is quite severe. So what we have to do now is to learn to live with the disease. So they go and come back and we get their report. It will determine, it will drive us to make certain decisions. And not until they come back. We must be very careful as to whether we are talking about lockdown in Obuasi. Oh. Uh, so the uh, Martin Amidu, please do some magic. Do some magic and also do it to clear the name of Ghana, especially in the Eba saga, so that uh, if people have to be in some places as a result of their actions, they don't miss their providential way. <laughs> as a government. While so much money has been and is being diverted into private pockets every day, these pensioners are struggling to access their small investments. Simple because, simple because. My medications, as you can see there, I spend less than 300 a month on medications. That's why my life, all these things have become a problem. My feeding is a problem. I have to also contribute so that children like this can also have a, be, uh, I can be useful to them. I said my, my daughter should save the money so I'll be getting something small so to take care of my sick son. He can talk. He is 40 years old. Yes. He's 40 years. I have to bath him. I have to do everything. To feed him. Everything. If we like the way. Go see baby. Bring him out. Bring him out. So we are pleading, we are begging the government to pay us our money. We are suffering too much. It's too much for us. So it's too much. Oh dear. Look, if you are stealing public money, acquiring property abroad while others suffer like this, eh? Amidu may not get you. Amidu may not get you, but your time will come, pay. I promise you, your time will come.